Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Tell yourself that the breath is your shelter. If you leave the breath, you're leaving your shelter. Because you have a good place to stay inside. Then you're not so much subject to the things outside. If there's nothing good inside, the mind goes wandering around. It's like a child wandering around out of its house. Might get run over by a car, might be kidnapped by a stranger. In other words, if the mind starts wandering around, all kinds of unskillful thoughts can come in and take over. Whereas if you're with the breath, you stay in your territory. There's a story they tell of the quail who wandered outside of his territory one day. This hawk came and swooped down out of the sky, carried the quail off. The quail started lamenting. Oh, my lack of merit. If only I'd stayed in my ancestral home. This hawk would have been no match for me. Well, of course, that piqued the hawk. The hawk said, well, where is your ancestral territory? And the quail said it was in a field with the stones turned up by a plow. So the hawk let him go. He said, go back to your territory, but you're not going to be safe from me there. So the quail goes down, finds the field, stands on top of one of the stones, and starts taunting the hawk, come get me, come get me. So the hawk swoops down again. And as the quail sees that the hawk is coming at it full speed, it hides behind the stone. And the hawk shatters his breast. The quail stayed safe. And the Buddha said, your territory here is, here is the establishing of mindfulness. We sometimes think of mindfulness as being a wide open, accepting awareness of whatever comes up. But that's not how the Buddha taught it. He says, it's a territory where you stay safe. Unskillful thoughts are not allowed in. Skillful thoughts are allowed, are allowed in. You don't go wandering off into sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations that would give rise to greed, aversion, and delusion. You stay grounded here in the body. You stay grounded in your breath. And that provides shelter. So when things outside change, you inside your shelter are not harmed. We look at the world around us. So many things are changing all the time. And it seems to be that the news just keeps getting worse and worse. So we're going to look for a sense of stability in this unstable world. It has to be inside. And so you have to look at what you've got inside. By being generous, you develop good qualities inside. By holding to the precepts, you develop good qualities inside. This makes the inside a good place to stay. And then with the meditation, you keep yourself protected. Stay with the good things inside. Develop those. And it's not as selfish just hiding away. Because after all, when you're generous, other people benefit. When you're virtuous, other people benefit. When you keep your mind protected, you're less likely to give in to greed, aversion, and delusion. And these animals don't go wandering around pestering your neighbors. So you benefit, the people around you benefit as well, because you found a reliable source of happiness inside, a place where you can be protected. Because as long as you're looking for happiness here, you're safe. Because that's what it comes down to. We all go through life looking for happiness. If you go looking outside, there's going to be conflict for sure. And even in cases where there's no conflict, there's going to be a lot of impermanence. It's change, ups and downs. Whereas if you look for happiness in a responsible way, make, taking advantage of the fact that you've got these good resources inside, the mind that wants to be generous, thoughts that want to be virtuous, okay, you encourage those. Thoughts that want to get the mind still, gain insight into why it's causing itself unnecessary suffering. You want to encourage those thoughts and then act on them. It's in acting on them that you strengthen them. So you're not just hiding out. You're looking inside for where your responsible sources for happiness are. And in being responsible in your search for happiness, you make the world a better place. That's what's special about the Dharma. The happiness of the Dharma is not just for people who, who practice the Dharma. It spreads its benefits around. 